film, I have to say I liked uh, a little bit more. Uh, but but admittedly, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Kubrick at all, oh. uh, though he has his moments. Hmm. Uh, Personally, I, I, I love The Shining. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's it's uh, one of Kubrick's films uh, th that he did, he did get right and got it right spectacularly well, in, in my view. Um, I, I saw it about ten years ago, but I, 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 would, I thought, it, thought it was excellent. Yeah. I see. Um... And I'm not. I'm not saying it was a bad film. Uh, I actually did like a lot of parts of it, a lot of the visuals. Mm. Um, one of the, one thing I guess I should ask beforehand. Yeah. Uh, have you read the original book by Stephen King? I tried. <laughs> um, I, I, actually, I, I read it and enjoyed it. Mm, oh, right. Um, I, I've actually only read two of his books, although I have read a lot of his short stories. I see. I've, I I read his books and I like. Well, I like the part of them that can't actually be put on film. Mm -hmm. I like the, uh, sorry, the lawnmower in the background there. Um, I like the parts that are inside their heads, essentially. The characters, he gets very descriptive about abstract things. Mm -hmm. And even now, in, in the siege days, you can't put half of the stuff he says on, onto the screen. So I do, ha I do view the movie um, as a movie and the book as a book, but, but in my head there are a few... There are a few things that I tend to compare unfairly, so um, so that'll be coloring the rest of my review. <laughs> I, I I think uh, let me just gather what I what I've got here. Is it ever let say while you were watching The Shining, uh, was it clear to you that say the ghosts within this film were, were in fact real, or, or were they just, a, a, did you view them as more of a product of his, uh, of Jack's unconsciousness? Um, I think, I think it was post, again, because of the, um, the book, the mm -hmm. book had it a little bit more active, but, um, I think just because the, a ghost unlocked the door to that mm. pantry. I forgot that, about that. That's, that's enough for me to for me to say that it's it's just an evil friggin' house. Um, mm. <laughs> one moment of being more aggressive, mm -hmm. I guess uh, that that I almost I wish was in at least one version of The Shining was uh, the, the black guy whose name I forget. Uh, the actor um, was called Scatman Crothers. I'm not sure of the character's name. Yeah. I've heard that. I've heard that name. For, oh yeah, Transformers. Anyway, anyway Transformers. Um, he gets I think so. Oh. He gets some. Um, one of the books for the cartoon. He uh, he gets attacked by shrubbery, um, uh, the the sort of long, or the sort of bush sculptures, whatever you call those, um, came alive and started mauling him, uh, which is kind of awesome. So so mm. there was actually a lot more stuff that would have worked on film in The Shining than a lot of his other books. In the end of the in the end of the book, spoilers, the um, the, 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 the entire hotel, hotel explodes. Yep. So that's a more cinematic ending. Mm -hmm. so, so you'd almost have thought he'd have gone for that, but he didn't. Uh, it was Kubrick I'm talking about. And I, and I think that works for the movie. That's one thing I will give it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, I hadn't really given it much thought un until now, but um, I, I suppose, you, well, in spite of the, the scene in which the ghost unlocks the door uh, of, of, of the pantry, mm -hmm. um, you could easily view... Um, this film is, is more of a, I suppose, as, well, it is a clear-cut psychological horror, but you, you could view it as, as more uh, as more of that kind of film than a standard ghost film um, through other factors. Say, um, we, we learn at one point that uh, the ghosts of this hotel wish for, for Jack Torrance to uh, kill his son, uh, presumably uh, due to uh, the son's gift uh, for The Shining, uh, well, mm -hmm. telepathy or whatever it was, uh, but otherwise no reasons are given, no, no, no motives are shown. We're never told why the ghosts want uh, Danny for that, uh, uh, say, why they want Danny. Oh, an angry house doesn't necessarily need a reason, but go on. Yeah, well, um, I, that's just my point. Uh, say, well, mental disorder, well, um, I don't 
mean to offend anyone who, who will be listening, but say, um, uh, say, mental disorders such as, say, schizophrenia, um, or, or, uh, they rarely make logical sense, uh, so to speak. Right. Uh, say uh, th there's there's rarely any any reason behind say say what you experience through those. Um, uh, as such, I, I suppose that and, and also the uh, subplot involving Tony, um, it, it does lend gravity to the idea that these ghosts might simply be the subconscious toying with the with the people living inside the hotel. Like, um, I never really. Th what did you think of Tony? You, you know the uh, spirit that talks through uh, the the boy's little finger. What, what did I think of Tony? The the subplot never seemed to go anywhere. Right. I I kind of had that same feeling. I mean, Tony was basically just telling him, telling him what he could see for his own eyes that things are going kind of bad yeah uh, and he doesn't always give reliable information like like uh, they're only images uh, just like scatman crothers told you and then the images that uh, beat him up so <laughs> thanks tony but uh, i i thought that well uh i well uh, danny does uh, describe tony as a, a, a well he's obviously an imaginative child he describes uh, tony as a little boy that what was it lives inside his his, his mouth yeah. um i interpreted that as essentially uh an imaginary friend of sorts that just got a little too violent um as, as such i i suppose if you if you look at that as uh, as that's uh, that subplot as one element of the story involving well the psyche the, the subconscious then, well, I, I, I suppose it, it, it renders the idea of the ghosts being, uh, well, not real, uh, m more, it makes it makes that uh, the idea more valid. The uh, the other counter I would come up with, mm -hmm. besides basically that door closing, is yeah. um, uh, the woman, I forget her name. Uh, well, Shelley Duvall was the actress. She, uh, I see, Shelley Duvall, uh, her character, she, uh, Wendy, towards the uh, end. Her name is Wendy, that's right, yeah. Wendy, okay. Sorry. Uh, Wendy, <laughs> Wendy at the, um, towards the end there, she's just sort of running around and having a freak out. Yeah. Uh, and it could be argued a little bit both ways, but she does, she does end up seeing scary stuff, like the fellatio dog suit and the, um, and uh, the room full of skeletons, stuff like that as she runs around. And I think that's just, I think that's meant to be interpreted as the house, um, house manifesting itself strongly with, with its crazy history. Mm. Um, kind of bubbling up to the surface. But again, because she's in a high-stress situation with a psychotic and isolated area, it could also be seen as her own little freakout. Mm. And also, uh, uh, none of these uh, paranormal visions are, are consistent between the characters. Say, well, Jack uh, at some point does, does uh, he has a nightmare about, well, killing his, his family. Uh, Danny often experiences well, shining visions of, 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 well, terrible, terrible things within the hotel. Uh, he, he sees those twin girls uh, at some point in one of the corridors. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suppose th these, the, these, say, Wendy, uh, the, uh, well, the supernatural sights Wendy comes across, um, they aren't at all similar uh, to, to what Jack or Danny sees. Uh, as such, they're essentially hallucinating entirely different... Th you could think of that as, as, as the three of them hallucinating entirely different things. I see. Um, so now, if I may actually uh, uh, move to a different thing, yeah. the uh, characters. Uh, I guess we'll start with Jack. Like, um, Yeah, what did you think of, of Jack? Or, or, yeah, Jack as Jack. Um, in his film. <laughs>